A really neat and interesting thing happened following the 86 Worlds. Unbeknownst to me, there was a guy who had just bought a Christmas tree farm. His name was Bill Boylan. He caught word that the Worlds was coming to Charlotte and he came down as a spectator. We didn't know he was there. So after the tournament, we get a phone call from this guy. He's like, well, I, I've made this Frisbee course on my farm in the mountains and uh, I, I want to have a tournament and uh, I want to put up cash money for the pros and, and uh, I want you to come up and look at it and see what it's like. So I got in the car with Alan Beaver. We met Carlton and I think he traveled with David Hesselberg. To get to Laurel Springs, you had to drive on major roads and then get off and get on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And you come off the Blue Ridge Parkway and you go down this dirt road and this huge valley opened up in front of you with rows and rows of Christmas trees and this long winding road to a house up on a hill. And it was, it was like something out of a dream, I swear. It was, it, it was really cool. We went to the first tee and every one of us threw every disc that we had in our bag. It was that cool. Every hole was dynamic. And he laid it out with an 81 mold a huge ultimate disc. He thought he was making a par 72 golf course. Of course, we could shoot in the 50s and 60s. It was such a significant turnaround from the par three courses that we were so accustomed to playing. Laurel Springs to me was the first super mega big course that I'd ever seen and I think was instrumental in inspiring Stan and myself to build something beyond a par 54 course, because to then everything was par 54. There were handfuls of holes on that course that you just walk up and want to throw your whole bag. So we went up to play this golf course and talked to Bill about setting up a tournament in July of 1987. So we called every big name player that we could get our phone number for, put out a flyer and put this thing together. After that first year, word spread like wildfire. Players were coming from California to play the Laurel Springs Open. It was that amazing. Bill spent hundreds and even thousands of dollars every year preparing the farm, mowing the lawn, trimming the trees, setting up tees. By 1988, he realized, gosh, I've spent an awful lot of money preparing this farm for just this one event. We've got to get a little bit more bang for our buck. So he and I talked about putting together an amateur tournament. And so I went before the PDGA Board of Directors at an open board meeting in Cincinnati and said, hey, we want to run the first ever amateur national championships. And they kind of looked at me and looked around at one another and shrugged their shoulders and said, uh, okay. So I ran with it and, and Bill and I put together the very first amateur national championships in 1989 we had to figure out how to invite players. And so I, I devised a method where there were two criteria that would get you in the tournament. You could either prove by showing some record that you had won an amateur event, or you could get your local course pro to write a letter of recommendation. He was announcing the event at a Charlotte Club meeting and officially opening registration. And of course, these, back in these days, it was snail mail and checks and you had to be there. So as soon as he finished that registration is officially open, I handed my check across the table to Steve and said, hi, I'm I want to play qualified and gave it to him. So I was the first person to register for the event. So people started sending in their registrations and we filled the tournament up. We filled up 90 players. Some players came from Texas. They came from the Mississippi border states like Oklahoma and Kansas. They came from Wisconsin, Minnesota, the Northeast. All these players converged for the first ever amateur national championships. Nothing like that had ever happened before. We had great weather, we had great competition. We had crowned J. Gary Dropko as the first champion. From that moment forward, every time there was a event at Laurel Springs, I was there. So I would drive up there Thursday or Friday before the amateur event and set up a campsite on the corner of his property. There would be six to 10 of us that would camp out. And I would be there for the full two weeks we cooked out and just did everything outside all week. God, we stunk. This was all spoken in this sort of player meeting that I had at the hotel one night 
where we talked about the future of the tournament. And I told him, look, I'm going to run the tournament this year one time, and I'm not going to do it again. This is your tournament. You guys need to run it next year. Nothing was really resolved, but a player named Harvey Barger had been in attendance for that meeting, and he was inspired enough by the things that were talked about to go back to Kansas and create the Am Worlds. So here in North Carolina, we planted the seed for the Amateur World Championships. Laurel Springs Open and the Boyle and Family Farms is kind of legendary. The course was the first monster course that included legitimate par fours and par five holes. It set a standard by which other golf courses were designed. Thanks again for coming. Yeah. It wouldn't happen without Bill Boyle's generosity. Yeah.